Hello Internet, welcome to the Craig Teaches Windows 8.1 series, where I walk you through this book. That's right, Windows 8.1, The Missing Manual. If you guys haven't bought this yet, you might want to as I walk you through everything you need to know about the Windows 8 series. O'Reilly does a fantastic job of putting these books together, and it will be our guiding light through the, uh, the hopefully the non-obstacle of Windows 8, where once you kind of sit down with it and work with it, it's not as bad as people think. In fact, there's a lot of great things about it as well. Now, if you haven't joined us before, and it's your first time here, consider becoming a patron. If you find value in what I do and you want me to keep producing these videos, for as little as $2 a month, a cup of coffee a month, you can help show the grow, help the show grow. <laughs> help the grow show. Uh, and the top patrons for this month are Jacob Williams of Wild Academy at wildacademy.com. If you're interested in Ruby programming or meeting just an interesting guy, check out wildacademy.com. Also, Ashley, wow, I keep doing that. Brooke Chamberlain with Ashley Beige Photography. Amazing photography there. Check her out at ashleybeigephotography.com. And finally, Precision Electric, Industrial Automation Service Center for Motor, Electronic, and Drive Repair. Check them out at precision-elect.com. And thanks to them, I can actually put on the show like I normally can right here in the morning. But enough about that. Let's talk about Windows 8.1. Windows 8.1, uh, today we're talking about the start screen. And if you haven't had the awesome luxury of checking out the start screen before, you can see it right here on my screen. And uh, we're going to cover some basics here before we get into it. Because from this point on, we are going to be in Windows 8. Uh, the video series, the, the precursor so far is done. We've laid the foundation. Uh, now is the time to really get, uh, really get into the operating system and start tinkering around with some of the basics. And we are going to go all the way into the advanced stuff. Uh, but right now you're looking at the Metro UI, or as the book calls it, the Tile World. Now the Tile World was implemented in Windows 8, and it was the most controversial part of the Windows operating system. It's basically the, the part of the operating system you look at and you say, Ugh. You know, most people look at it and they're just like cringe. They're like, what were they thinking? Uh, and I can tell you, and that's why I'm making this video, I can tell you exactly why they did it. I can tell you what their motives were, and I can tell you why it turned out to be, I think, a really good idea uh, in the long run, uh, even though I was a big frustrated ball of mess. Uh, the forced implementation is what drives people nuts, and that's understandable. So if I look at my start menu here, what I have here is I have a whole series of tiles I can look at, uh, and I can highlight over each one. I can even right-click on them. And uh, basically, uh, each one of these opens up an application in its own way inside of the tile world. So in other words, if I open up Internet Explorer, it opens up a tile world version of Internet Explorer. doesn't open it like a traditional uh, shortcut would in basically in a, a desktop computer, like a Windows computer. Because normally, I would click on that icon and it would show my taskbar at the bottom and it would show uh, just Internet Explorer on my screen. But that's not the way this one works. This one opens it in a tile world environment. Now, when I'm trying to differentiate between these two, notice that if I say, if I go back by pressing the Windows key and I go to my desktop and I open Internet Explorer here, Notice that it opens it completely different. Now, some people are going to wonder, why? Why Microsoft? Why? And, and I still sometimes ask myself that question on a regular basis. But you notice that both of them launched Internet Explorer, but they launched two different versions of Internet Explorer. And that's what's important to take away from this video, is that there are two separate environments running on Windows 8. And you need to acknowledge that before you even begin going into Windows 8, is that there's going to be two separate locations for launching programs, and then there's going to be a frustrating in-between that occurs. There's gonna be this melding point in which certain applications only run inside of this tile world and other applications only run in the desktop. Let me give you an example of that. If I pull up my, uh, my start menu here again, or my tile world again, if I select a file explorer instead of Internet Explorer like I did, Notice it actually opens up Internet Explorer or the File Explorer in the desktop environment. So that's what I would call a crossover. It doesn't actually have a File Explorer uh, tile world application. So it actually opens your desktop back up and opens it. So this is a crossover that will occur and it will frustrate you because sometimes you will open a program and it'll open it right within tile world, much like Internet Explorer did. Other times you will open a program and it'll open up in the traditional desktop environment. 
Um, it was it's this crossover that I think really frustrates people the most because it it really says, well, where should I be, Microsoft? Where should I be? And the truth is, is Microsoft doesn't really know. Okay, they don't they they haven't really committed to one over the other um, because the whole point of the Windows 8 uh, environment was to get a mobile interface in front of its desktop users and this is all a marketing thing okay this has nothing to do with improving the user experience has nothing to do with making your life easier it's actually a, a way for Microsoft to say oh no we are behind in the mobile market we need to get our mobile interface in front of as many users as possible and so what they did is they implemented this tile world uh, environment uh, as a layer on top of the traditional Windows environment and the tile world environment is a way for people to become accustomed to the actual uh, Windows uh, mobile environment so if you went out and bought a Surface Pro tablet or if you went out and bought a Windows phone it would be very similar to the tile world environment and it's Microsoft's response to uh, the mobile market and and there's a lot of good things that came out of this because for example, the Surface Pro laptops or the Surface Pro tablets and the Surface laptops or the Windows 8 touchscreen uh, laptops are very good products with this operating system because it's very touch friendly. Uh, this, this tile world environment is meant to be for touch screens and that's why a lot of the things when I talk about it in Windows 8 such as bringing up your charms bar, you have to put your mouse in the top right corner and that makes your charms bar slide to the right. Or if you go and bring your mouse in the top left corner, it opens up your most recent programs or lets you tab between your programs. Or if you go in the bottom right, it has this little question, this little minus sign. And, and so there's, there's, there's like, it's like, why would you have to hold your mouse in a corner to make things happen? And it has everything to do with the fact that this is a touch screen environment. Doesn't make sense to do it with a mouse, but if you had your finger, it would make sense. You could just tap a corner. Uh, so keep that in mind. Keep that churning in the back of your mind as we go through this series because a lot of what we're going to have is this crossover where you're going to be like, why is, why, 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 why? Well, and that's why. That's why because they want you to get comfortable with the mobile interface of Windows. And like I said, there's some great things that came out of it as well. Um, but um, but uh, it's that initial frustration that occurs. So that's it for this video. I wanted to walk you guys through the separation of the two environments. You have the traditional desktop environment and you have the tile, tile world environment. These two environments are isolated for a reason. Sometimes you're going to have some crossover. Sometimes there's going to be some frustrations there. But remember, tile world is more meant for touch screens and uh, the, the desktop environment's more meant for traditional desktops. Uh, there is a way to bypass the tile world in a lot of ways. We'll talk about that later on. Uh, and so you don't have to ever deal with Tile World or rarely have to deal with it. But we're not going to really address that right now. Um, but I would encourage you to kind of just get comfortable with it, get used to it, because in a lot of ways there are some advantages to it as well. Uh, and then if you decide, okay, this definitely isn't for me, you can completely or for the most part eliminate it using a couple of applications that are simple to use. So thank you guys for coming out. This is my uh, my basic Windows 8.1 series where we're going to walk through the Windows 8.1 missing manual and we're going to learn everything we need to know about this uh, the software. Now, if you find value in what I'm doing here, remember this isn't a permanent part of the show yet, walking through books. That's not until we reach the $500 mark on patrons. For as little as one cup of coffee a month, you can help support the show and grow it into what we want it to become. And uh, thank you guys for coming out. And until next time, don't be mastered by the machine. And I'm not just talking about technology.